Welcome into the Jets Nation Radio, sponsored by Betway. Make sure you like and subscribe to Jets Nation Radio so you never miss a podcast. Welcome into Jets Nation Radio. I'm Angus Hout. As always, be sure to check out the latest NHL odds with online sportsbook Betway. They should uh, send me a new line because the <laughs> NHL's over for the season. I mean, congrats to the Vegas Golden Knights and the five Manitobans who uh, wa- walked away with the cup. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what was that? That, in your opinion, that's probably the worst Stanley Cup finals we've seen in ever. I don't know. Like it was, it was kind of, it was like it's had so much potential. And I think that the reason why people don't think it was that good is just like Florida was just too injured to really keep up with Vegas to begin with. So it had so much potential to be like a team, uh, like a matchup of teams that never won the Stanley Cup, but. Ultimately, it kind of fell through on the entertainment factor. Yeah, uh, just the way it goes. But it's kind of funny that uh, Vegas ended up winning it in five when they lost in five to Washington all those years ago. So, I mean, good good for them for finally winning. Uh, one of the old guys that works at the, the radio station I'm at comes into the, my office like, Angus, it's a great day because they're one of those guys going to walk into here and we're going to be able to touch the Stanley Cup. And they just disappeared into the ethos. But I'm like, there's a good chance I get to see the Stanley Cup this summer. So I guess I'm kind of glad Vegas <laughs> won. <laughs> Only if if I see the cup. Otherwise, that I'm going to be kind of miffed about it and complain that the Jets yeah. lost to the Stanley Cup champions. So do you watch any of that parade or see any of the highlights from it? Uh, No, but I did see uh, Aiden Hill like he was like singing at like a club or something like that. And like, kind of like those kind of individual clips, but they seem to really be enjoying the moment. Oh yeah. Uh, I think it was Chandler Stevenson, like just couldn't get out a coherent sentence, like just skipping words. Like it was rough. It was so funny to see, but yeah, good for those boys pulling off a win. And I, it sucks that Vegas won because they don't know hardship and they never will. But I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll expect what? to see the cup in Vegas for a long time is what I'm thinking here. Yeah. Only in our dreams will, or many years down the road, will Vegas have to actually go through some adversity and not make the playoffs for a couple years, at least hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, one year to or only missing the playoffs once in six years. Unreal. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if the NHL starts kind of throwing some, extra clauses into some of these con or uh, into like ownership contracts, you know, you got to pay a little bit more money because of the tax brackets, especially, you know, Canada versus a place like Vegas where, you know, you got the strip, you got everything of Vegas plus no, no state tax. And is there an income tax down there? I have no clue, but okay. all I know is that Vegas probably has some better tax systems and more favorable to the players than if they were to play in Canada. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, eventually that was going to start catching up because, you know, young guys are going to be like, well, I can actually save a ton of money playing, you know, Arizona in the southern states minus California. So I don't know. I kind of hope that the NHL throws something, some kind of tax system into it just to help out some of these northern places because, yeah, it's not fair. Yeah, it might be a little harder to do that, but. It like ultimately like for the better of the game to make it more like the UFA market more competitive. I feel like it definitely could be something, but it may just be kind of a fever dream at this point. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, let's get into the real talk here. Uh, RFA contracts that need to be signed this season, not Pierre Luc Dubois, because we know he's not signing here. Uh, we got uh, Morgan Barron, Kevin Stanlin, Sandberg, and Logan Stanley. Uh, twelve. The Jets also have twelve point nine million in cap space. Uh, who gets paid the most, and whose rights get signed away? Uh, I gotta think that Sandberg probably gets the biggest deal because they're probably gonna want to lock him up like longer term than most do of you, those other guys. So, do you think I like think... they would go like do an eight year with Sandberg, like just with all no. the potential? No, I think like. I think all those people on the list, like, I don't think any of them get more than, like, four years just because, like, they're still kind of rookies and unproven talent. And, like, you don't know what the finished product is going to be. So you don't want to pay Sandberg eight years and not have him improve upon this season. So I think I could see Sandberg getting, like, a four-year deal. 
but I feel like most of these players are probably going to be taking that one to maybe three year deal, depending on how much the Jets want to give them. So I think it has to be between Sandberg and Barron, but I think just because Sandberg plays defense and defense only has a few finite amount of positions and forwards have more than double, I feel like Sandberg is probably going to get the bag over Barron. It's just double. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, there's, there's only six D man and twelve forward. You're a and... numbers guy. You're making. <laughs> uh, so don't trust anything financial from Ray. That's what we're saying. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> don't. <laughs> um, who? Okay, so if you could choose to have one guy long term between Baron and uh, Sandberg, who are you signing? Like, I guess obviously it would be uh, Sandberg if I'm reading between the lines. Here. <laughs> Holy, um, how I much would, would you how, I... like? What like what what's, what's the dollar you would pay Morgan Barron today if you could like make that contract happen? I'd probably give him like a three year deal around like two to two point five million, kind of right. like oh yeah, like see, if I... it's a two year deal, I could see it being probably less, like maybe around like one point, like the high ones. But, like, I'd almost want to sign him to that three-year deal to just be that perfect third-line guy. And for Sandberg, ideally, like, I'd do, like, a four-year deal somewhere in between two to three million, depending on that. But, like, ultimately, again, like, you got to see where his fit is long-term. Like, if they're trading out one of the Dillons, like, I'm not signing him to a four-year deal if one of the Dillons is still going to, or both Dillons are still going to be there. So, or like they don't, or they're intending to keep both of the Dillons. So if there's no, if there's going to be no major change on the defense, I'd say maybe two to three years on Sandberg for around the same as Baron. Really? Just that low one and a half, yeah. $2 million. See, and I, I could almost, if you could move out one of the Dillons, I would almost justify having Sandberg here for like, five years at 4 million bucks a pop. And I mean, like that first year is probably going to be a sloppy year. Like you're, you know, you get that sophomore slump that's going to happen, but I bet you years two to five, you're going to look like the smartest GM in the league signing a guy like Sam yeah. for four years, four or five years at 4 million bucks a pop. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing. Like those types of contracts, like ultimately when you sign them, you're like betting on the player and you really want the contract to look good. But ultimately, again, like those are the contracts that are risk versus reward, where if that first year is a rough year and you don't really see that kind of improvement or kind of expansion on his game, like four million, like if we're paying the same Sandberg that we have now and we have that same Sandberg for those five years, that contract is not going to be looking the greatest. Like, but he's going to get better. Yeah, he's going to get better. But like how much like ultimately you could sign him to like a two year deal paying like two million bucks for two years and then but when, then you're then you're stuck paying him eight million dollars a year it's like oh, you're not cool. paying sandberg eight million dollars a year you, would, no you don't think that guy's gonna that guy's gonna be an elite top five defenseman you, in I this league i i will put a hundred dollars okay. down right now ray I, that this guy's no. gonna be a top five defender it's just gonna be we're gonna be talking about a norris candidate in dylan sandberg Get him for next to nothing. <laughs> Dude, I'm not even like off in my own world here. This is fact. He's going to be a Norris. I, what, Norris candidate. I, like, as much as I want to believe that, I don't think that, like, I think the Jets are going to use the system where they have Morsi at 6.25. So if Samberg gets that level. Four million bucks at Samberg. If you're yeah, losing one the, of the Dillons, why not? Yeah, yeah but like you, like, you have to, like, you don't sign a rookie defenseman for like eight years after seeing one season, like you kind of want to see. Look at like, your Leon Dreisaitl. Think... Leon Dreisaitl yeah. had, okay, two years in the league at that point, but he signed this super long deal. His first year sucked ass. Everyone forgets that. You have yeah. Leon Dreisaitl for eight schmill. Yeah. Peter but Shirelli's I think a diff- genius. I think the difference is Leon Dreisaitl was also the third overall pick and Samberg was a rookie this year at like 23 years old. So, but I how do you that, how do you watch Dylan Sandberg and be like, yeah, no, that guy's not gonna obtain? I, it's not that it's not that I don't want to sign him long term. Is I think that there's like a balance between signing him to what you would ideally want to, like as much as I want to, like sign him eight years, like four million or maybe like four point five. 
but like that's a risky contract. You want to see what else he can but, bring. But if you're doing it for four years, four by four is an easy contract to swallow. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. So, but, but I don't think years. Sam, yeah, I don't think Sandberg is going to make more than Morrissey. No. I don't think. Yeah, so I don't think like if you sign him to that two year deal any or three year deal, and he becomes like a capable top four defenseman that's like right behind Morrissey, and he goes for that next contract, like. I don't think it's going to be $8 million. It could probably be like a 5.5. And then the difference between that being like you're paying, like the difference is like what, $1 million maybe. But the cap always goes up, right? So like he's obviously, he is going to earn more by that point. By the time we get to 2027, if we do that four by four, he's, and he's that capable number. I, I still think that he is the Jets number one defenseman by the time we get to the end of his RF, but at the end of this contract in four years, he would be the number one defenseman in the, in this city. I don't, I think Morrissey is, I think you're kind you're, of underestimating. That's going to be a 27 that you like Morrissey's not going to regress that much. He had an all-star season for the first time ever. It's fantastic to see that, but Morrissey's going to be, you know, what 32 at that point. I think, and like Sandberg's going to be 27. They're just going to be, you know, one's going right into his prime, one's coming out of his prime at that point. Yeah, but I think that you forget that Morrissey had like 70 plus points, was like third in scoring among defensemen. And I, I don't think. Yeah, you, you have know, a one or, great year. I don't think Sandberg is that like point producing defenseman. I feel like Sandberg is going to be the defenseman that gets you like maybe 30 points, but just solid all around kind yeah, of. Well, you, He's still not gonna... need, you still need to defend. You still need to pay your defensive defensemen. Those are one yeah. of the, like those guys get forgotten every time to get paid. Like in all honesty, like Brandon Dillard should have been making as much as Neil Pionk. Like I would have been swapping those guys salaries around. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So Knock it off. Uh, like, yeah, don't be paying guys be, like by their points. Like, that's not how I'm going to be paying guys if I'm a GM. We discussed this last week. I'm a fan GM, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think one thing is, like, as much as you want to sign these play like, like, Bar- like Baron or Sam for, like, eight years, like, I think that there's, like, that relationship where, like, players want to bet on themselves as well yeah. to get that bag as well. So, yeah, and I mean, like, Morgan Barron, I could legitimately see like a two to three year contract and I would say 2 million bucks a year. I think that would be fair for him. Honestly, I think he would probably try to go get Andrew Kopp money. Maybe he'd be like, I want three and a half, four million dollars. And I could see it. He might even just take a one year deal and just kind of be like, hey, I'll stick around. I'll, you know, gentleman's contract on this. I'll come back, but I need to make sure that I get paid. And he's still like, he's, hasn't played in full 82 game season yet has he he took a he missed a few games so you know there is that working against him he's a guy that the jets will need to sign long term in the future yeah because you can't lose a guy like morgan baron unless again you make an andrew cop trade and you know trade a couple years down and you know watch that happen but i hate i hate seeing that here in winnipeg like we got to keep those guys around because andrew cop on this team would have just been phenomenal yeah and we I been... think one thing about Sandberg, though, is I would be fine signing him to that long-term deal on the condition that either Brendan Dillon or Dylan DeMello is traded. So and I think you'd have to lose Brendan Dillon. I like yeah. Brendan Dillon. He's one of my favorite players on this team, but that's just a type of game that eventually wears out on a guy. And you don't want to have a you know a 35-year-old Brendan Dillon you know, suffering on your, uh, on long-term injury reserve or, you know, whatever like yeah. that. So I don't know. I and yeah. Sorry, Brennan Dillon. <laughs> it, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, Stanlin, is he a jet next year? I guess he's an RFA. Yeah. So probably, I probably. think he'd probably take a one-year deal. One year, $900,000. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And Stanley, He's, I think he's the one that gets traded. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to be a, at least a piece in somebody's trade, right? Yeah, I think that if, like, with all four of the main Jets that are going to get traded, I think that, like, he might just be attached to one of those trades to kind of help out the value of the trade or something like that, so. Mm. Yeah, he would definitely would. Like, I, I'm 
I don't want to root for him on another team, but if he were to come into the Jets organization next year and ends up, you know, as a third line guy, I really hope that he's taken that next step forward that he just got to practice all of last year. That's kind of yeah, what I'm hoping what, for. Then, then what's happening to Hainola then? Oh man. <laughs> Why? And like we were talking a little bit this week about it, like the draft with it's co- it's coming up. We'll talk more about it next yeah. week. But you think that the Jets are going to take a defenseman this year again? I the think that round? they like, like as much as like the like they tend to draft the best player available. I think that like looking at who they've drafted in the past, like how many first rounds? Cole Perfetti forward, Jazz Lucius forward, Brad Lambert forward, Rutger McGrody forward. It's like the last first round pick defenseman the Jets have is Heinola. So I think that they're probably going to look towards like we kind of spent a lot of our first round picks on forwards recently. But if there's a forward that they just can't miss, like, I don't know, like someone who falls, like obviously they're probably going to take them. But like there's going to be so many like forwards on this team that like, Sure, like we have a good young prospect pool, but like we still have Ehlers, we still have Perfetti, we still have Connor. Like, not everyone is going to be carved into the top six. So, I think that looking at a defenseman probably wouldn't be too like outlandish to think that they go for in the first round. Oh, look at you using that big old brain of yours. Uh, no, I totally agree. I didn't even think about it that way. So, um, Elliot Friedman saying that Pierre Luc Dubois is expecting between eight point seven five million and one and nine point one five. Uh, how much is con- uh, Pierre Luc Dubois's contract worth? What is he worth, or what is he going to oh. sign for? What? Okay, let's let's get to one of those. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's he actually worth? What do you think he's worth? If you were the GM that got to sign that contract with him. I think he's worth kind of almost exactly what like the Suzuki contract is like kind of like that middle, like in between seven, five and eight mil. But like, like he's a 63 point center. He's obviously going to get better. We've talked about signing him long-term in Winnipeg too. And like probably over that price too, like almost $9 million just because of the type of player he is and kind of how good he can be when he's on his game and just the physical presence. But I think that he's worth just below eight million, but like not by too much. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I was just like, I, I, I think he's worth seven and three quarters. But yeah, that playoff experience or that playoff drive he has, that's uh, there's not much of a dollar yeah. amount that you can throw at that. So if you've got a playoff team, you might as well make it happen. You know what? L.A. for one year with Pierre Luc Dubois, that might be pushing the L.A. Kings over the top and taking them to the Western Conference Finals against the Oilers next year. Um, What do you? I think he signs for eight point five. Eight point five on the low end. Yeah. Ooh. I I think like even though like Elliot Freeman said like that kind of range like ultimately like I think he's gonna have to kind of drop a little bit from that just to kind of help that like say he goes to L.A. or Montreal or the Rangers, like, ultimately, like, sure, he's going to want to get the bag, but, like, if he wants to go to that team, like, he's going to have to, like, there has to be, like, a little bit of leeway for him to fit because, like, like, New York and L.A., like, they aren't, like, full, like, cap teams. Like, they, like, like there's going to probably have to be a contract coming back to the Jets in either of those trades. So it's, like, I think he's going to have to, be like, yeah, I wish I could get like nine million, but like, yeah, I guess I can settle for eight point five. How many cups of coffee do you have this morning, there, Ray? You up <laughs> to eighteen likes in that sentence alone. Yeah, <laughs> sorry to call you out right in the middle of the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, Greg I Rizzi- guess I do be like that. Yeah, I do be like that sometimes. Uh, Greg Rizzi- Rizzi- Wizinski, that is a hard. I can't do those. Uh, yeah, yeah, Russian and uh, Ukrainian names. Those are tough for me. Uh, Greg. Uh, had an NHL executive say the UFA class of this year is, quote, fucking awful. How much it, will that drive up the price of uh, the Jets' core four that are most likely being traded? I think that it definitely increases that value just because not a lot of top-end forwards are going to be available. You look at, like, what the best forward is. Like, who who's the best forward in the UFA market? Ryan O'Reilly, maybe? So yeah. not a lot of top end talent. So sure, that it definitely drives up their value, but I wouldn't say it's like 
drastically increases it because ultimately teams are going to have to trade for that player rather than just sign them. So I think that it creates more like business, like more teams would be interested in these players because there just isn't the UFA market for it. But if anything, I hope that it creates the market for Blake Wheeler. So, <laughs> Oh man, it would be like, I'm still heartbroken that we're going to end up losing that guy. Cause he's such a good, like, he do, he's not he doesn't have those big flashy games anymore but 60 points in 80 games like come on or it wasn't even that like but basically two thirds of a point a night was where he's at so you lose a guy like that and it sucks but yeah just the locker room just doesn't fit for him anymore do you think he's going to be a buyout kind of a guy or is yeah, there a trade think, out there I think that the Jets are probably going to be patient with it like we saw that OEL got bought out on the first day of the buyout period and there's probably a lot of other contracts like that, like Kaylor Yamamoto, maybe Matt Murray. I think the Jets are going to be more patient with it and maybe wait till draft time and kind of wait to see if they get offers. Because ultimately, if they get an offer for him where it's like even just like a fourth or fifth round pick, like that's better than buying him out because then you don't have to take on that salary. But ultimately, it's up to if they want the cap space this year because if they are having to retain... 50% of his contract to just get rid of him for like a third round pick maybe like that is less cap space if you just buy him out but ultimately then you would have that other year buyout so it definitely depends on if they want the cap space this year or if they just like yeah I can retain 50% and get this so I don't affect the next year yeah well it's only what 275 I think it's two hundred yeah. uh, two point seven five million dollars to buy out Blake Wheeler yeah. for this year and next year, which is really not that bad. But the Jet the Jets have only ever bought out one other player, and that's Mark Stewart, and that was for pennies on the dollar. So Yeah, but we also did see the Steve Mason that trade that ultimately did get bought out. So kind yeah. of that same kind of situation where it was a bad contract, but instead of buying it up themselves, they kind of traded assets so Montreal would do it. So Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I it. Where would where do you send him technically though to eat up that contract? Arizona. I don't know. Like that's the one thing that's going to be the most difficult is we've talked about it. He has that five team trade list, and then everything else needs his approval. So it's like if you can't find something on those five teams, and he's not willing to waive, I think the buyout is very likely to probably happen if they want to move on from Blake Wheeler. Yeah, and it, it does need to happen. Like, that's just a simple fact, is you can't have Blake Wheeler in that locker room anymore, which is really unfortunate, but yeah. You yeah, gotta... the one thing that sucks is that even if they, like, I, I remember this from when um, Washington did a trade with, I don't know who, but they had Orpic in it, and then they traded that person to another team. They got bought out, but then Washington then signed that player again. Oh, so, so one thing that kind of sucks is if the Jets buy out Wheeler, they can't just immediately be like, Ayo hey, Wheeler, take like a $1.5 million deal and kind of come back even though we just bought you out. Yeah. Yeah. it's a, <laughs> Can't really just pull off madness like that in the NHL. And some guys kind of take offense to it too. And they're like, well, I won't play there now because you bought me out. Um, well, that answers that question. Uh, oh, we have the first signing of the season. The Jets would sign Fabian Wagner. Is he just another Euro Moose player who hangs out for a few years and then gets mad because he can't get any NHL time? Or do you think we have a 19-year-old superstar on our hands? I don't think he's a superstar, but like I think that we saw in the world, like the world juniors, like he like he was a six-round pick. Like there's not a lot of expectations on that type of a player. And he went out there and succeeded. He had like six points in seven games. And like when you have that type of player and you're like, yeah, like I didn't even expect him to get maybe two points. And he comes out there with seven or like six points. Like you can definitely see some like upside with him. He's a very responsible two-way player. And he's just like a smart IQ and passer type guy. So I definitely see him kind of being almost like kind of what Axel is right now. Kind of what he is. So but maybe as a centerman and kind of more responsible as a kind of 200 foot player, but like that type of player could definitely be like that type of third 
maybe fourth line player. Sweet. I like to hear that. Thank yeah. you for the prospect report on. But it's uh, definitely it's definitely not going to be like him coming in at twenty two. Like it definitely yeah. would be him coming in like twenty four years old. Some seasons with the Moose. He might even be in the in Sweden for like the next like three or like two or three years. So. Oh, he can really do depend- that with that contract. I think that next season he can go into Sweden, but I think the year after he might have to go to the Moose. I'm, I'm okay. not sure about that though. So it just gets loaned out or whatever. Yeah. Well, all the best to Fabian Wagner. Yeah, and uh, he's going to be at the, what's it called, like the prospect yeah. kind of thing that the Jets have in, in July. So That, and uh, then there's like the prospect weekend in uh, somewhere in British Columbia. Penticton? Yeah. Penticton. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I want to go out there one of these years. And so, yeah. yo, subscribe to this podcast because, you know, send us off to do cool things, you know. If you if you tell your friends and family about us, they tell their friends about us. You know that could be at least six new listeners. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, actually, yes. Uh, you know that's all the Jets questions we have. So I did do up a couple of fun questions for us. Uh, Ray, you're from Ontario. Why the Jets? Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like a short but long story at the same time. Like. Back in, I think it was like 2018 when I was just like, like I was always into hockey, but like it just got into watching the NHL and kind of being a more consistent watcher and fan. And I wanted to like, I wanted to cheer for a Canadian team, but Toronto media was always so annoying. And I kind of wanted to have my own kind of team where I'm not picking that team because of like my friends that cheers for that team or something like that. So that eliminated Ottawa, Montreal, and Vancouver and then I kind of wanted something close by so then Edmonton and Calgary kind of got eliminated so then the Jets were doing really good that year that's the year that they got played against uh, Nashville I think in that or no but it was that year that like they almost won the yeah they went on that run yeah that that first run and like that's when I started watching them in the playoffs and it's just like ever since then it's just been kind of it hasn't been been always consistent but like as like as the year's gone on it's like i've gotten more and more invested in the team nice and Uh, now i'm on a podcast so and now you're on a podcast (laughs) it's fantastic Uh, um uh did you have a team growing up like in like uh the o or Uh, i I used to watch the the kitchener rangers a lot so okay so Danny Zilkin's on that team right now. So yeah. I never got to watch him this year, unfortunately. But I think that he had a pretty good year there. So, but they have always been kind of like a competitive team. So it's nice kind of going out and watching them play. Yeah, man. Like I'd love you, like WHL games for me. Just love them. It doesn't matter who's playing. It's just like they're just a rowdy, different game. Uh, what was the first? Or yeah, who is your favorite Jet right now? Right now, yeah. Oh, I was not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> um, does it have to be a current jet? No, just whoever who's like well, that guy that you're just like, yeah, that's the guy I love. Uh, future jet Brad Lambert, right there, of so. course. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to pick like a current jet right now, it'd probably have to be Ehlers. Yeah, that's fair. Also, like, we're, we're going through so much change with this yeah. team, so it's hard to have like a favorite jet. Yeah. Uh, what was your what was your dream job as a kid? Uh, I really wanted like I was I was always really into video games, so I always wanted to be like that designer or kind of like creating the games. But I didn't realize how much kind of work went into that. Like I know it's not being like an astronaut and like having to know all these different types of physics and stuff like that. But I'm not a very like. I can use a computer, but I know there's a difference between being able to use a computer and being able to like code and like create an entire game. So I don't think that I think my younger self would be like, hey, why aren't you doing that? I'd, I'd be like, hey, it's a lot of work. So <laughs> just ignore it. Don't do it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, if I could have told younger me that it's like, yeah, you get to talk about hockey and then like, oh, super easy. Lots of fun. I was like, dude, you don't know how much work it is. Like, you have to know numbers, <laughs> <laughs> but it's still like real cool. It's like, I know. Yeah. It's fun yeah. talking hockey. I love, like, I'm not on the radio anymore, but the fact that I was on the radio, such a sweet gig. 
now I'm in promotions and they just send me to stuff and they pay me. So like, actually, yeah. I was this close to meeting Nickelback this week and then now I can't, but that's okay. I get to do fun radio things. <laughs> um, for $72,000 a year, which is just a little below the uh, the average income of Canada, would you eat three sets of pr prairie oysters? Do you know what prairie oysters are? I had to Google it. I I, I saw two <laughs> different ones. One was like a shot and one was like bull testicles. So. Bull testicles. Well, yeah. So three sets. Would you do that? Three sets. Like what's considered a set? Like a pair. Oh, okay. So, so you got to eat six of them. And I get a whole week. Okay. Yeah, I'd probably do that. Yeah. One a day, more or less. You get Sundays off. Yeah, just one a day. Just kind of eat it before bed or something like that just... <laughs> before bed wow, i don't know man. just like it's like i don't know like Is, it's a, I, like just a, like seventy two thousand a year may not seem like but it's like you only have to eat six a week so it's like if it was like if i had to do a pair every day i think that i probably wouldn't do it okay fair enough yeah because like okay so recently i've been taking uh what's called lion's mane mushrooms to just help me focus on the day and it tastes awful. Like there is nothing worse, but I've been forcing myself to do it. And it's like, you know what? It's been helping me with my brain and whatever. And I think I, if somebody were to pay me to do something gross, like eat something gross, I could do it. Just it's the first <laughs> few days that you have to get over and then you find out ways to prepare it. So it tastes slightly better. Yeah. I saw that it can get like deep fried and stuff like that. So yeah. obviously it's probably going to taste like, I don't know what it's going to taste like. I've never had it before. But like, they're not obviously good. they're going to, they're going to, it's going to not be as bad. Like there's definitely ways to make it like, just like douse it in like ketchup or something. Fair. Oh, ketchup. <laughs> or something. Just like. I have such an issue with ketchup, man. It's like one of those things, unless it's like, there's very few things I'm like, yeah, ketchup can go on that. Like uh, my partner and I will just go after it. Cause she'll like put ketchup on her pierogies and stuff. It's awful. Uh -huh. I was just like, why would you do this? She's like, it's good. It's like, no, that's a little kid condiment. Go find something better. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, not even on my fries unless they're like specific fries, like those thick uh, thick fries, like those steak yeah. fries. Those ones are the only ones worthy to get ketchup. <laughs> Maybe a little bit on my poutine as well. Uh, what is the best cheese? I'm not the like the biggest cheese you're, you're not a cheese guy i'm not a cheese guy no ray you're missing it. is it because you're lactose <laughs> no it's just like i don't know i just never really what gotten into cheese i know it's weird but what? like it's like if someone like handed me a bar of cheese like i'm like bro i'm not eating that like, <laughs> a bar of cheese <laughs> bro my friend eats a bar of cheese and he just shreds <laughs> it up and just eats the cheese yeah, because it's delicious. Who calls it a bar of cheese, though? It's a block. What or a block of cheese, my bad. <laughs> are you an this alien? Why, this is why I'm not a cheese guy. Oh, yeah, you're obviously missing out, man. Like, like I've been grilling lately. I've been doing skewers, and I've been like, just different cheeses. Like, get me a little hunk of like, uh, halloumi. Throw that bad boy on there on the barbecue. Mint. So good. <laughs> I can't. A bar <laughs> of cheese. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe i should kick you off this podcast i'll go back to rambling by myself <laughs> just going over every single cheese flavor it's not even gonna be a jets podcast anymore it's just gonna be you talking uh, about cheese oh buddy yeah like i love me a good halloumi like yo you smoke them too like i've started smoking my own meats too and so like when i'm doing that i'll like throw some cheese in there so i have like snacks through the day <laughs> <laughs> like, what, like what, did you not enjoy grilled cheese as kid as a kid no i had grilled cheese it's just like i don't know it just never was like my favorite thing and just like when okay, you're so not like having it very often you're okay just not... so like it's 2 a.m you're stumbling home what are you grabbing from the fridge to like just mow on real quick before you shut her down for the saturday night uh probably like eating an entire bag of chips or something like that i don't know <laughs> okay Maybe... what's, what's your favorite kind of chips definitely barbecue barbecue are we talking like spicy barbecue or just like good old Regular lays? barbecue yeah Ray, lays barbecue or something oh, like that's that, a yeah. good one i'll give you that or like ruffles or something like that those are the two i mainly go to fair enough i'll give you those ones i won't rip you on that just yet <laughs> <laughs> 
Cool. I'm a little disappointed there. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the greatest hockey movie or TV show? The greatest, or just, it says great here. I, like okay, okay. What's your what's your favorite? Favorite definitely has to be the Mighty Ducks. The Mighty Ducks, oh, yeah. Like the first yeah. one, D two. Yeah, just D one's pretty good, but I think that D two was pretty good too. Yeah. I think I'd watch D two. D two, I like yeah. that. I'm all in on. And then stuff. another, but another like a really good one that's more kind of modern. I'd say is pretty good is Shorzy. Shorzy, I love Shorzy. Yeah. And we're getting yeah. season two here. Yeah. I don't know when, but I know we're getting season two. Goon, that was my oh, favorite. Oh, Goon's another one. Yeah. yeah. Sean, oh man, just like, yeah, they're like the, you've got a pretty name, you got a pretty face. Favorite line ever. I may have used it on uh, on a few girls, <laughs> and I'm so sorry to the women that I've used it on, but whatever. Now you know my secrets. Uh <laughs> So yeah, that was definitely my favorite. I'm sure like and Miracle is like the first one I ever watched. It's like, whoa, hockey's crazy. So uh and I know this one isn't on the list. So maybe you gotta hold on to it. <laughs> is there one live hockey moment that you wish you were there for? Definitely the gold medal game in the 2010 Olympics. 2010. Oh man, what a moment. I was watching it on the TV. It was it was just crazy. Like it was like an entire like I was only like eight years old then too so it's like like the amount of like i think that's what really sparked like me in the love of hockey and to be at that game in canada and to win it i think it would i think it'd be priceless yeah like i we did so i went to church as a kid and like we uh the youth leader uh we crammed into his place and he had like this little downstairs condo there was probably like 25 of us like crammed into his place just to watch it. And just the electricity amongst all the condo buildings, like you could feel the anticipation and you heard it throughout everything. Fantastic moment. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there, I think that there's like, that's the right answer. And I think almost I think, every, every other answer is probably wrong. Probably. Maybe <laughs> I think the only other acceptable answer is the 72 summit series. If you could be in Russia for that game eight. Yeah. I don't, I haven't watched that game. So, <laughs> Oh dude, you, uh, if you can ever find any documentaries on the 72 summit series, that's some good stuff. Like you want to feel patriotic and like, yeah, we can kick the Russians ass anytime. That's the one, like yeah, <laughs> good old Canadian patriotism. Um, I think it's Roku channel. Uh, they had a thing on Don, like they had the uh, Don Cherry thing that they had uh, CBC did like 15 years yeah. ago. <laughs> oh, uh, that's the same guy that plays Shorzy uh, as Don, and <laughs> just so good. Like, like you know, unfortunate way that Don Cherry left CBC yeah. and kind of like the pub, the good public image. But to just remember, like, how much of a troublemaker he was, like, even in the 70s and the 80s, where he's just a goon out there on for <laughs> the media. I loved it. So, yeah. Yeah. Now we've talked about <laughs> all of the great hockey properties. Uh, Ray, that's yeah. all I've got this week. You got yeah. anything else? Where can we find you on the Internet? Uh, you can find me at Ray.how on Instagram. And, yeah, Angus did the questions this week, so it was definitely a little step down, but we can come back. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. But, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can send them in. And, yeah, next week is probably going to be talking about some draft prospects. So if you have anyone that you specifically want us to cover, I can look into them. Yeah, well, uh, I'll post that on Twitter there later today, or uh, probably on Wednesday. I'll post that on Twitter. Yeah. Anyone that wants to hear about draft stuff, we'll get you set yeah. up there, Ray. Uh, make sure you check out JetsNation.ca. We occasionally post, but not really. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it helps my bosses see that people go to the website. Also, thank you guys for subscribing. We've had a really good couple of uh, last couple of podcasts. So continue to tell your friends and family about this. This is awesome. Uh, finally starting to see the numbers grow ray you are fantastic yeah. you can follow me on instagram and twitter angus hout uh, if you see me kicking around with uh, either kiss 1023 or 921 city feel free to say hi enter it into win tickets have a great week Peace yeah. and grace. go just go just go